Hi everybody, it's Gil. And me. Yeah? From where? From Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, that's right. Hey, today we're going to actually be doing some grilling out. Um, <laughs> you know, Deb's been Deb's been really busy um, helping out with her dad, and uh, I've had the girls here and, um, you know, making meals after school each day, and, man, I, I give it up to all you single moms and single parents out there. I don't know how you do it. It's tough. So... McKinley. And we have Joyous Happy McKinley. I'm not happy. I can tell. Why? Fish, are you angry? So this week I saw some chicken breasts on sale. I'm gonna cook them up. Um, I I really want to do them good. I mean, normally I would do them in the oven, but it's a little warm, so I got the grill on outside. Uh, I'm gonna try and get it to around 400 degrees. Basically, a chicken breast at 400 degrees for 22 or so minutes is about perfect. Um, and all I do is rub a little bit of olive oil on them. Um, and salt and pepper, and that's it. So I'll put a link to these down below. If you haven't used these, they're these mats. They're called grill mats, and they're completely flexible. I can't remember the material they're made of. They're clean real easy. You basically put it down on the grill, and you can cook fish. I've actually made pancakes on these on the grill. Um, it's great for on the boat when you don't want the heat inside. Uh, the beauty of these things is I take the tongs, and I lift them up off the grill, and in about 30 seconds, they're cool enough to take down below and just wash off. So I'm going to use this um, for my chicken breasts on the grill. I have indirect heat going on, so I have the burner on one one side and I'll do all the chicken on the other. Uh, I've got a thermometer in the lid of it, so I'm going to try and keep it about 400 degrees. Quite frankly, if I'm plus or minus 30 to 50 degrees, I'll be happy because it's hard to regulate these little these little grills. So there we go. So I've got my chicken breasts, um, two, four, so there's just six big ones in here. Uh, I'm actually going to be using pecan oil just because I didn't happen to have any olive oil handy. So I'm going to open each one of these up. Can you do me a favor? Can you unscrew the lid to this bottle right there? Thank you. No, not that one. This one right here. This one? Nope, this one right here. Look at where I'm pointing. That one. Yep, take that lid off for me. Can you get it? Yeah. Go ahead. Keep trying. You can do it. Real hard. Real hard. Oh, come on. Can you do it? Huh? Real hard. Keep going. You getting it? You want to help me pour it? Ready? We have to go real slow. Ready? Go a little bit here. Here we go. Do a little bit, a little bit. Hold on. All right. That's good. Now, yeah, Grandpa's, got that's a, good. Grandpa's got to massage it in. So now we're just going to take some salt. I'll do it. I'll do the salt, okay? I want to do this. You want to do the pepper? Can you do it? I'll hold it right over the top. You twist this way. Ready? You got it? Good job. All right, so now I'm just gonna massage this oil into each one of these. We wanna get them good and coated completely. Um, and there's a little bit of a little bit of fat still on that one. We can pull that off of there. These are boneless, skinless, but I just bought the cheaper ones, so they're not trimmed as good as the, they're not trimmed as good as the ones that were $5.49 a pound versus these that were a buck ninety-nine a pound, so I'll deal with it. But it's just not that hard to do that. Again, yeah, we're uh, just massaging this oil all over these. And because I salt and peppered one side, I'm going to turn them over and leave the other side exposed. So after I wash my hands, I can easily uh, salt and pepper the other side before we go out and put them on the grill. Now, these are pretty big. I, you know, I, I could have probably even butterflied these, but they're going to be good the way they are. So I'm OK with this. What are you doing? We are putting seasoning on them and we're putting oil on them so we can cook them. And then we're gonna cook all of these chicken breasts. Then we will um, we'll have them all week for lunch and for dinner. Doesn't that sound good? I love it. And we can, make, we can make chicken tacos one day. We can make all kinds of different stuff, huh? Yeah. I'm gonna make you puke? No, Is that what you say? Oh, poop. You're making me pee and... Do you have to potty right now? You sure? Okay. All right, let me wash my hands real quick. All right, nice dry and clean paper towel. We don't want to cross contaminate anything here. Pick that up, put it right in this bag. Let me have this here. I'm going to put this away. We're done with that. No! Don't put 
I'm not gonna put this away. We need to. I need to do this and put a little salt and pepper on these. Do this one. Yep. You ready to do that one? Can you do it? They're turn. It's really hard to turn. Don't touch the chicken. Just keep it above it. Luckily, nothing's coming out of what she's doing there. So, all right. What are we gonna do, Grandpa? We're also doing baked potatoes with these. The girls love potatoes a bunch of different ways. I'm just baking up a bunch of them. We can cut them up. We can make some home fries. Um, I, I can even mix them with some eggs and make like a hash brown kind of omelet thing. It's really good. Uh, but I'm gonna start with making them baked. I think that's gonna be a good start. So um, what we do is pretty simple. I just take a fork, punch some holes in the baked potatoes. Um, normally I try and use russets or Idaho's. Uh, I've washed them first, obviously. So once we just poke some holes in this, we're set there. And for me, it's as simple as just rubbing a little bit of olive oil on them. And salt and pepper. So there we go here. It's coating the whole outside of them, and I'm just going to wrap them in foil. So just putting some salt and a little bit of pepper on these potatoes. Um, usually I just do salt, actually. And because we have several of these, I'm making one of these mine. I, I love uh, Jamaican jerk seasoning, and I'm just going to try this. I'm going to take one of these potatoes, and I'm going to wrap it in foil along with this. Uh, this is Tabasco flavor. Uh, it's Caribbean style sa steak sauce, um, but I've been using it as a marinated. It's really good. It's, it's a jerk seasoning kind of thing. I'm just going to put some of this on these. I like that. Have a go of it. I got it. And as simple as just rubbing this little guy around in it and wrapping her up. And again, all I'm doing is wrapping these up tight. I'll do the same with this one here. And we'll put that over here to carry out to the grill in a few minutes. Deb and I started doing blue apron meals from time to time. It was working really well when we were all together here. Um, we would get these meals. They were three meals for two people. And we would make a meal for two people. They would feed all four of us just fine. And they were really interesting things. And the thing runs about 60 bucks or 70 bucks or something for that. But when you think about that, you know, so it's $18 a meal or something like that. Or 20. Yeah, hey, call it 20 bucks a meal. I don't know how many people use Blue Apron. Deb and I have tried it. It really works pretty good. This is not sponsored in any way, shape, or form because, quite frankly, um, when we don't plan well, we buy the box, and then we don't cook the stuff. So what we ended up with is I've thrown some meats away, and they get these little packages. They call them uh, the knickknacks. So this one was a mustard kitchen knickknacks, and this one is a grilled cheese sandwich knickknack. All of these things are like the side items for things that we're going to have. So a couple of items that came in that we didn't use before the meat ended up um, not being usable went bad. So I've got a thing of sweet peppers, Dad, some corn, some carrots, uh, and some snow peas. So I'm just going to make a little bit of a saute, and I'm going to throw all this on a pan, and we'll heat it up for dinner one night. You want to open these up? Let's see what kind of stuff we have in our knickknacks. You ready? Can you open that bag? Yeah. All right, tell me what's in it. Oh, look at this. What are those? I don't know. Those are almonds. Are they your favorite? Yeah. All right. So we got almonds and Dijon mustard. Good. I'm actually going to put some Dijon mustard on one of the chicken breasts. Here. Like this. Ready? Let's see. This one is beef and rice knickknacks. Let me tear that. There you go. What all do we have in there? We got a, oh, let's see. We got a shallot. That's good. We'll use the shallot. Let's see what this is. All right, so we have honey, mirin, whatever that is, uh, golden mountain soy sauce, a little all-purpose flour, a little bit of rice flour, another Dijon mustard, and a small thing of butter, which I'll save for putting in with potatoes. All right, let's see what we have. You want to open this one? Yeah. This one's called a grilled cheese meat. Let's see what's in this one. Give me a minute. There you go. What do we have here? Let's see. We have Labana. By September 15th, 2017. I think um, this is probably still good, but it makes me a little nervous. 
pickled goat horn peppers. Ooh, they smell good. You like the smell of that? No. You don't? Well, we might mix that up with some of those other peppers. Let's see what else we have here. Kalmata olives. They don't look so good. We're going to throw those away. What else do we have in there? Do you want to open up that bag? Need some help? Oh, we also have, ooh, look at this. King trumpet mushrooms, too. This one's marinated chicken thighs one. This one might be really good for given what we have going on right now. Uh, you can see what I mean? There's a jalapeno pepper. That's a bit old, so that one's gonna go right in the trash. Ooh, yummy. Fontina cheese. Some Chinese five spice. A little bit of grated Parmesan cheese. Some capers. And we have sesame oil, soy sauce, mirin again, and rice vinegar. Oh, we have all kinds of good stuff, huh? Yeah. All right. I think that's it. Why don't we cut up some of the peppers after we'll go put the we'll go put the chicken on, okay? Okay. So then you can do it. Can you cut that off? No, nope. you can't use a sharp knife, okay? That's dangerous. That's what mirin is. There we go, a little white wine. Just went ahead and got the baked potatoes off the grill. So I'm gonna just kind of move these aside so you can kind of take a look. Yeah, they're hot. They came off the grill, literally. They are not hot. Thank you. You got iron fingers over here, this one. Um, and then I told you I was- Hands in burning water. I was saying we were just kind of making a bit of a leftover. So I took one of the baked potatoes and I just broke it up into pieces. After sauteing some of those sweet peppers you saw us cut up, some of the uh, shallots, um, and some carrots. You know, just a hodgepodge here. I'll give it a shot and see how it is. Eating it from the pan. <laughs> we're eating it directly from the pan. Let's see, you want to try a bite? Mm -mm. I'm scared it has spicy stuff and I don't want to ruin my hair. It's good, and it was a great way for us to just use up a bunch of the leftovers. For me, that's two or three days worth of side dishes. I don't think the girls will like that, but it gives us something good to work with. Is it like spicy stuff? I don't think so. You, the potatoes were cooked in it, so they might taste a little spicy. No, I'm, I'm fine. You're not gonna try it, huh? No, I The carrots are a little al dente, but I like them that way. So, all right, chicken breast is just about done. I'm gonna go grab them in a minute. Come on, get your head down in here. So, Chaz got a haircut today. Look at that, nice and short. I don't think we can see it. Literally, it's the short now. All right, so we've got the, uh, the chicken done, and I thought I'd just cut one up just to see how she looks. These should be, they should be good and juicy. Um, I'm gonna start with one of the smallest ones. If any of them are a little bit dry, this will probably be it, but these should be good. Looks good. We kind of take a look here. Oh, looks nice. Man, I'll tell you, my knife is dull as can be. You got a donut hat? Want to taste by the chicken? 
So, from the sailing vessel Dream Chaser, well, I don't know if this is the end of the video or not. Adios. <laughs> Say au revoir. Au revoir. Hey, I said that chicken. Yep. Hey everybody, thanks for watching, and please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even Tumblr. Please take a moment and go over to our website at svdreamchaser.com to download free resources for cruising and how-to projects. Get your thumbs and mouses ready. We also have a couple of links right on the screen for some other playlists and videos that we think you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching, fellow dreamers.